My name is Carol Reese. I'm a Rutherford County Master Gardener. I'm going to speak today for a few minutes on um, hydroponics. The reason I'm covering, covering hydroponics today for my audience is, and I'm speaking at the Senior Center, the reason I'm covering hydroponics is because it's so easy for people to plant in water um, and, and not have to deal with digging up the dirt. And uh, I'll show you why. Hydroponics comes from the Greek word hydro and uh, ponos meaning labor. Hydroponics is gardening without soil. Can be a viable option to reliable, reliably grow fruits and vegetables um, and herbs regardless of climate, soil avail availability, or space. It's a type of horticulture and a subset of hydroculture which involves growing plants without soil by using mineral nutrient solutions in an aqueous uh, substrate. Terrestrial or aquatic plants may grow with their roots exposed to the nutri nutritious liquid or in addition the roots may be physically supported by an inert medium such as perlite, gravel, or other substrates. Perlite typically will float a little bit, gravel not so much. Other substrates such as styrofoam or um, you can have a floating medium or you can have just a uh, uh, vermiculite would also be something that would float a little bit that would support your root structure inside an issue. Vertical systems. In this system, the nutrient solution is going up through those tubes into the, um, the vertical tubes and just trickling down. So the roots are exposed to that aqueous solution, uh, but they're not immersed in it, and that's fine. You can do that. They call that a, a film. Uh, and each one of those holes is a plant, is filled with a plant, those are strawberries. Now the beauty of hydroponics, those strawberries aren't exposed to the dirt, they're not exposed to any bugs, they're not exposed to any uh, disease vectors such as viruses or um, any kind of little bugs that's hopping from plant to plant. So this one's in a greenhouse, So, it, but if you can keep the bugs and the diseases out of that greenhouse, you're going to be completely organic because you're not going to need any of uh, the chemicals that would kill bugs. You're, you're not going to need insecticides. You're not going to need herbicides. Those, those chemicals become a not part of the, solution, of the uh, equation at all. No longer. So this is completely organic. Now you are giving artificial nutrient, or nutrients in water. So that part is not organic. But uh, that, that's okay. You can make your own system. There are instructions on the internet to use these um, totes and trickle the water and then recycle it out, out from the bottom. You use an air pump and a water pump um, to grow these plants. In a, it's, this is a closed system. But this can be done at your home, on your deck, if you would like. Uh, they can be grown anywhere. Plants in a hydroponic system can be grown anywhere year-round. You have greater control over the growing conditions for increased crop yields and faster growing time. No weeding required. Save water up to 90%. You're saving up to 90% of your water. You can grow them on your deck. Um, no need for crop rotation. Plants can be spaced close together and stacked vertically. In this, this isn't stacking vertically, but we will see a, uh, a slide where we are. So, in a closed system, the extra water is staying in the system, and it's being pumped back out and then dripped back into the top. So it's, eventually you have to add a little water. It's not perfect. But yeah, but it will save up to 90% of your water. That's what you're losing through evaporation out of the soil, not evaporation, not transpiration, which is coming out of the plant, but evaporation out of the soil or um, what's leaching into the soil around the plant. Disadvantages. There are some disadvantages. These systems are expensive. Uh, startup costs are expensive, but then you can reuse them over and over and over again. You can get a whole system um, on, online and get it delivered to your house and use it. You can make your own system. There is a store here in town um, on Clark, uh, close to Broad Street, 
that carries hydroponic systems if you're interested. You can start with a little bitty system. You can start with a three plant system just for your herbs in your kitchen. Um, you start with a little system or you can medium system or you can go large, go big or go home. Um, but stuff and places where there's not a lot of soil, where you're going to be trucking soil in anyway, like I live on top of a rock hill <laughs> and there's not much soil there. If I start a garden, I, I'm continually adding soil. I probably bought bought 40 or 50 bags of soil for my just my flowers this last year um so you know things like this this is good if you don't have you can still garden without soil um but the higher up starting costs compared to soil growing systems then diseases when present in um these systems especially in a greenhouse environment can advance quickly and it does require some basic skills and knowledge to maintain these you have to maintain your pH level you have to maintain your nutrient level and you do have to monitor that but it's not horrible it's not impossible uh, hydroponics produce can be grown in a home an apartment a greenhouse or an office space the six things needed are light air water nutrients, heat, and space. Those are exactly the same requirements as what you're growing when you have a garden outside. Light, air, water, nutrients, heat, and space. And you need the air not only for the top part of the part plant, but you also need it for the roots. You never want your roots immersed in water all the time. They need air. Uh, you can get uh, ultraviolet or shop lights that throw off a full spectrum. You can also get grow lights if you want, but you don't have to buy expensive grow lights unless you want to. Uh, the T8s and the T12s are magnificent. When your plants are seedlings, you want to keep your light right above them. And as they grow, you just lift that, continue to lift that light a little bit higher, a little bit higher. So if you start a tomato plant, tomato plants require what's considered full sun. Full sun is six to eight hours, yeah, six to eight hours a day. Um, some plants require bright light, but diffuse sun, like uh, African violets or tropical house plants. They're more of an understory plant. They do require a good bit of light, but um, it's not intense bright light. It's like they're growing at the edge of a wooded area. Uh -huh. it, but tropical plants grow in, the, in tropical areas, zone, heat zone 10 or above, or, or cold zone, heat zone 10 or above. Florida. Think of Florida. When you drive down the road in Florida and you look over to the side of the road and you see that peace lily growing at the edge of that woods, it's getting diffuse lights because there's lights. The light is filtered by the plants around it. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. think about it that way. Yeah. And some plants take medium light, which would be two to four hours. And then some plants take shade, which they can still get some light and do very well. But very few of your food plants will be shade plants. Um, I think um, there are a couple that, that like it shady, but very few. And I'm, I, I don't want to lie, so I'm not going to tell you any that, that I could possibly be wrong. Um, most of your food plants are full sun plants. You know, there are def definitive light reactions in plants, and there are definitive dark reactions in plants. Indoors or outdoors? If you do it indoors, you'll have a better control over your uh, heat and just about everything else. You have control over your humidity, you'll have control over your heat. You have, uh, if you use artificial lighting, you'll have control over how much light and the quality of the light. Again, you, you'll be right on top. You, you adjust your light to, this, to the height of the plant. Um, what happens when you have a plant and it's not getting enough light, and this is for plants outside and plants inside, hydroponic or not hydroponic. When you have a baby plant or any other plant that's not getting enough light, it starts to lean. And it's reaching for the light. And when you see the spaces between the nodes get real long, unhealthily long, especially in seedlings, there's a fungus that attacks the stem of that plant. It's called a damping off disease. The damping off is caused by the fungus. It causes the little poor little booger just to fall over, dead, no, no more. Um, 
But the real culprit in that situation is not the fungus. The fungus can only attack that stem because it's so very weak. So when you start seedlings, you want them to be strong, you give them plenty of light so they're not reaching, and the fungus will, will be at bay a little bit. And don't overwater. It's, and uh, sometimes I blow on them to pretend like it's the springtime. I just <sighs> I pretend like I'm a springtime wind. <laughs> and that strengthens the stem a little bit too. Um, but yeah, where was I? Hydroponic growing done indoors or outdoors in either setting plants will need five to six hours of light per day, access to electricity, and an area that is level and without excessive wind. Now this is technically indoors, outdoors, because it's in a growing uh, a, a, a hoop house. So you've still got dirt, so you still have the possibility of vectoring diseases and bugs in through the dirt that's sitting underneath those tables. Um, optimal temperature dep depends on the plant type and the variety. Again, your tropicals can withstand more heat than the things that grow in the north part of the, um, the United States. Your, your peonies, your, your dahlias, they, they like it a little chillier. Uh, the plants that grow well in Minnesota are not going to grow as well here. Water culture. Water culture systems, that's the solution that you're running th over the roots in your plants in hydroponics. Water culture systems use one of the following three methods. A nutrient film technique, that's, and in that system, the, the moisture is run over the roots full of nutrients. The roots pick up what they need, and then uh, the, the nutrients go away, the, the water goes away, and then it's periodically run back over the roots. So it's not sitting in water. The water's running over the roots, they pick up what they need, and then they're allowed to dry out just a titch, just a titch, not, not completely dry out, but not sitting in water. The second is plant roots are placed in a small diameter PVC tube or trough, and the nutrient solution flows over the roots, forming a nutrient-dense film of water around them. They can be open systems or closed systems. The benefit of open systems, or I guess as you can see what's going on, the benefit of closed system is that you're gonna lose less of your water um, and uh, have to adjust the pH and the nutrient content of your solution more, uh, more regularly. Open system, you're going to have evaporation. So your, your, your nutrients are going to stay in the water and the water is going to evaporate. So you're going to have to monitor that a little bit more closely. Closed systems, not so much. Raft or floating systems. Plants are supported by sheets of styrofoam floated on aerated nutrient solution. The reason we're using aerated is because uh, plant solutions or plants require oxygen to their roots. 25% of your soil composition should be air spaces. 25% should be water spaces, and the rest of it would be uh, degraded rock and soil. In a, in a perfect soil. 25% water, 25% air, and the rest of it would be a, composi a, a com combination of loam, rock, and nutrients, soil nutrients. So, the roots hang through s small hose holes in the styrofoam. There are other materials, not just styrofoam, that are used in this and are suspended in the solution. Raft systems are closed, and the nutrient solution must be frequently monitored and adjusted. Aeroponics. Aeroponics, plants are placed in a supporting container. Now, in this picture, those containers look like they're solid. They're actually not. They're more like a little basket. Your roots are, are suspended in the air in that little basket, and they are sprayed with a jet from underneath. The jet contains the nutrient sol solution, and it's spraying those roots, just like you would run the water through, and it would flow over the roots, and then the solution would abate a little bit, and then you, you do it again later, You're never allowing the roots to dry out. The roots are misted with nutrient solution rather than being immersed in it. Aeroponic so systems can be open or closed. Again, we're open, open system, closed system. Now, you can do something like this, like 
in your basement or in your garage. I know there's not a lot of basements around here. <laughs> but um, the extra solution is traveling through the tube, the drain tube, into a tank, and then it's pumped back up to spray the, the root. This is a simple, simple that you, uh, you could do in your house or in your old fish tank or with your, uh, the betta fish. Again, that is a hydroponic system, but we'll, t we'll talk about that at the end. Okay. This is an ebb and flow cycle where you have your plant suspended. It's pumped from a reservoir into the grow bed. So it's just like where the nutrients flow over the roots, but in this situation, they're flowing over the basket with the roots in it and it's pumped over them and then allowed to um, drain back into the reservoir and the, the nutrient solution is recycled time after time after time. Again, you gotta monitor it to make sure that all the ingredients are still in the right proportions. Drip system, you're pumping the, the, the solution up through a tube and it's going into the top of the plant in a container, the plant can be suspended in pearl. This is one where you'd use your perlite, your vermiculite, or your uh, uh, gravel, but it's still a soilless solution. You're not going to use soil because you don't want to get your system full of uh, debris because you're going to, you got to pump it. If you got to pump it, you got to get it through a little tube. If you get debris, you're, you're going to be unclogging your tubes all the time. Um, it's, provide, it's the same nutrient solution provided to plants, supported by a solid medium by drip irrigation. And then you collect the residual uh, nutrient solution and pump it back up into it. And that's pretty much what it looks like. And we can do stuff like that in, this in our houses. We can do a lot of these in our houses. Sub-irrigation systems. Plants are grown in a porous medium. Those look like lava rocks or pumice rocks. Uh, nutrient solution is transported to the roots by high capillary action. The reason I say it looks like a pumice rock is because in pumice rocks, there's a lot of cavities. If the, if the solution fills those cavities, it's still available to the root systems. But you're not getting debris. So it, there's not a degradation of the, the rock and you're, still, you're not getting debris and it, it's going right through. Homemade systems. Now this is where I wish Jack was here because Jack was an expert on making these systems. He, I, I actually have seen diagrams of what he made. Jack Smith is, was the former talker. He was supposed to be here today, but I think he's visiting his family. He made a system that looked just like that big tub. Um, and I, and uh, so it's easy to make at home. You can do this at home. You just need a water pump to pump the solution back from the bottom into the top. You do have to monitor for pH and the nutrient concentration every so often because you don't want too much nutrient uh, due to the fact that some of this stuff evaporated off. The water in the, in the solution would evaporate off. The nutrients that you're, gonna look, that you're looking for for these are carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Those are nutrients taken from the air. Nutrients taken from the water will be your copper, your boron, your calcium, your chlorine, your molybdenum, sulfur, zinc, um, magnesium, potassium, phosphates, and nitrogen. Did I say nitrogen? But that's what's coming from the water. So when you make your solution up, you'll tailor it to the plant you're, you're trying to grow and those, that's the, the chemicals that are going to be in the water that is being flushed over your root systems. Um, nitrogen, 70% of the air we breathe is nitrogen, but it's, it's in the soil, there, I think it's only 13 or 14%. You have to have bacteria fixing the nitrogen in the soil. In this, uh, you'll be able to control the, the source of nitrogen much more readily. And that's the biggest nutrient that you're, you're looking to give to your plant. The two options for obtaining nutrient solutions are purchasing a commercial solution or making your own. Um, 
An optimum formulation depends on several variables, such as plant species, stage of plant growth, part of the plant representing the harvest, season during growing, um, and weather if outdoors. Again, nutrient uptake. There has to be a source of air. I've already said that, sorry to repeat myself. And the air is produced by an air pump to an air stone in the liquids in the root submerged system. Anybody that's ever had a fish tank knows that there's, got, there's a source of air coming up through the gravel in that fish tank. So um, you, still, you have to have an air, uh, a source of air in this system. Typical water culture system, again, you got an air pump, you got an air line, and you've got your nutrient solution. Your plants are floating on styrofoam sheets, or they're cut into styrofoam sheets, and the nutrient solution is used only once on crop plants if you're using an outdoors in an open system. In a closed system, the nutrient solution is used once, then analyzed and adjusted to the proper levels. It also must be sterilized to control the spread of pathogens and return to the plants. Common methods for sterilization include heat, ultraviolet radiation, and ozone. This is again a decorative hydroponic system. We're using the pumice rock. Looks like we're growing herbs. That sage down there, that looks like rosemary or lavender. I can't tell from the color and I'm not, at, I don't have any idea what's on the top. Medium culture hydroponic systems are susceptible to pathogenic microorganisms accumulating in the medium with each successive crop. For best results, it's recommended to sterilize the system in between each crop. Now, I don't know how much you guys are into sterilization, but I'm not very good at it at all. I just would tend to use it over and over and over again. You can get a little bitty system where you plant your plant just in one of three containers. Say you just want fresh herbs. Say you just want fresh basil, uh, parsley, whatever. You can get these little bitty systems that just mist the roots, sit on your counter if you, you, know, if you have extra space or if you have them in the garage. It's fantastic. So gardening is possible for every, every part of, the, of folks. Older folks that don't want to dig, younger, younger folks that just want to see something growing on the corner of their desk. It's possible for, to have all of it. That's amazing. Yes, you see that? that that's a vertical garden. The, this is, would be the film system where it's just dripping over. But that is moss and other plants growing on a wall. And I've seen this done um, in a bathroom, and it was fantastic. Oh, it was beautiful. It was, it clean, you could just tell the air was cleaner in the vicinity of these plants. And it was just exquisite to watch. And I'd love to get some system like this in my own house, but I'm afraid I would, the water would leak and I'd end up with a bunch of damage to the house. <laughs> but it was just exquisite. And so this is something you could have in your house. Again, here's a homemade hydroponic system right here. Is that a plastic? It's a plastic bin. It's a plain old plastic bin with water being pumped from the bottom to the top and then drained back into the bottom. And they're using pumice in the, as a... Uh, it looks like it, doesn't it? Yes. Some kind of... of it, it, it's not actually to, to provide nutrition. The nutrition is coming from the, the liquid that's going over those roots. And the, the rocks in there are just for support, just to keep that plant upright. Um, okay, that's it. Do we have any... Uh, that Hydroponics is not an in-depth, large topic. It's easy to do. It takes a little bit of extra money, but it's, it's possible. It's possible, and it's super for people like me. As I age, I, I, can't, I can't be digging all day anymore. Sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> you know, so yeah, hydroponics could be it. And my favorite thing about gardening is that at the end of the day, whether I was successful or a failure, at whatever endeavor in gardening I tried, there's still tomorrow. That seed is still gonna germinate tomorrow. Gardeners, look, there's always tomorrow. They're the most forward group 
looking group of people I've ever encountered. <laughs> Thanks for paying attention to us today, for paying attention to me today. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. If you want more information on hydroponics, there's tons out there. I am a Rutherford County Master Gardener, and um, I'm here at the Senior Center. If there's ever a topic you'd like to hear about, just let us know. Thank you.